Welcome to What If Season 1 Episode 6 Thoughts. What if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark? Now, the, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, especially videos made by New Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CPR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN, Heavy Spoilers, and Magic Maggie. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, and the episodes of this show that have aired, and that includes this episode. And this is another episode that is neither in too much of a hurry nor ever meanders. So, briefly expanding on a point I made near the end of last week's What If episode vlog, I realized after doing the vlog last week, technically each of the Disney Plus shows so far MCU shows so far have had main and outside of what if one of the two titular characters who killed or at least badly hurt someone they didn't have to Wanda and WandaVision Bucky and Captain America and Winter Soldier you know uh, let's see yeah both of the Loki Loki and Sylvie both in Loki in this show Strange Supreme in addition to Black Widow and Shang-Chi the movies and some during the show itself, others only before. I'm not sure Loki has intentionally hurt anyone on Loki the show. Also, making it more complex, these characters either did it against their will, such as, you know, Bucky, or they thought what they were doing was actually the right thing to do and only realized afterwards that it was, in fact, the wrong thing to do. There are some theories that the voice that Wen Wu heard imitating his wife, asking him to save her, is actually the same voice that Wanda heard imitating her son, saying, save us. I'm not 100% certain myself who the source of the voice is, but I am certain that it is not Pete Bottoms, because he never said help us. And Killmonger saves Tony and is made the new chief security officer. I, I really like how, you know, it, it very quickly changes from the events of Iron Man 1 and gets, yeah. And Christine Everhart confronts Killmonger and Killmonger reveals Obadiah was behind it and gets his job. And I really appreciate the accurate characterization of Pepper as very smart. She, right away, she's like, there's something wrong here. I liked that we got a dummy cameo. And, you know, Tony looks at the, the, the schematic and, you know, Killmonger's like, what? I like anime. It was very nice of them to let the actual Michael B. Jordan write that. But then if I got to work with him, I'd let him do some writing as well. For those who might not know, the actor literally is a fan of anime. That, that is really cool. I, I have to wonder if that was like, you know, they, they were like, we have a what if episode for you. And before they got a single other word out, he was like, can it involve anime? And just like in Iron Man 1, they don't get the, the tech, you know, they, they run into some, some issues. And, you know, Killmonger brings up Vibranium, and I'm like, oh no. Ulysses Claw, oh no. And Claw wants to sell the, you know, he's like, okay, so the spear, it's, I know, it's kind of expensive. And Rhodey's like, that's, you know, what was it, 10 million? That's what Tony spends on a slow Tuesday in Vegas. And Claw's like, I'm glad you said that. And, you know, he goes to sell Rhodey the Vibranium that in the movies ended up getting used for and by Ultron. And Black Panther attacks. It's, 
It was it was very clever, and and really, I mean, the fact that Black Panther did not make an appearance in Age of Ultron, I mean, it basically there wasn't really room for more characters in that movie. I love that movie, and I don't think it's overstuffed. But I agree that if if they included Black Panther in there, you know, and and Black Panther gets such a perfect introduction in Civil War. So anyway, but makes a lot of sense to to do that. Yeah. And it is legitimately uncomfortable seeing a character played by Chadwick Boseman be killed. But, you know, then he does get to appear in the afterlife later in the episode, so that's nice at least. And I really love this character moment. It really, it perfectly illustrates both characters' point of view. Kid, you gotta be part of the system to change the system. Nah, you can burn it down. And Claw was in on it with Killmonger, just like how they work together in the movie. But like in the movie, you know, Killmonger is taking advantage of Claw. And Jarvis saw the backstabbing. It's it's very clever. You know, it's the it's the same thing that we see Tony use with, with Jarvis in Iron Man three when he's trying to, you know, he's also trying to solve a murder there. It's just the the weapons of murder are are different. And Tony locks down the room, and he made the drone work with vibranium from Eric's ring. I found out you murdered Rhodey, and that's why I decided I won't be your friend anymore. And Killmonger defeats the drone with the spear and then kills Tony with it. And it's it's such a great, like, he didn't have to, like, shove the blade further in, but he wanted to, so he did it. The difference between you and me is, you can't see the difference between you and me. Perfectly written and delivered line. Great to see General Ross. And Claw drives Killmonger to the edge of Wakanda, and then he kills him and brings him, like in the movie. Very interesting to see Killmonger face to face with T'Chaka. That is, we, we have not seen that before, and I really, I very much appreciate it. Killmonger's plan really is very, very clever. Chess, indeed. And epic battle between the drones and the Wakandans. Very cool seeing Killmonger fight with, not against, Dora Milaje. So cool seeing Romanda in action. Like, I mean, I don't know. She... The... the we, we want to see, let's see, I want to say Angela Bassett. Who doesn't want to see Angela Bassett kick ass? That's like, that's never happened. There's never, there's, there are people who want to see Angela Bassett kick ass, and then there are people who can't admit that they want to see Angela Bassett kick ass. So many effective twists in this episode. You know, we never know exactly what Killmonger is going to do next. And I saw one of the... One of the other YouTubers that I mentioned at the start of this, talking about that if not for Tony, if Tony had died in one of the movies before the, you know, before he did sacrifice himself, yeah, the U.S. military probably would have taken over because they wanted free access to his tech. And especially if Ross was still a general at the time. And T'Chaka willingly makes Killmonger the next Black Panther. And, you know, from his point of view, that does make sense. And really chilling when, you know, Pepper's like, with all due respect, General, isn't that a lot of firepower to aim at a country most Americans can't find on the map? And Ross responds, by tomorrow they won't need to. Yeesh, that is dark. And it is a great, you know, a country most Americans can't find on the map. That is really biting commentary on U.S. foreign policy. And Shuri was smart enough to see through Killmonger's plan. And she's going to work with Pepper. And we have yet another cliffhanger. Like, there's no way they're going to be able to follow up on all these episodes, right? So it's, I don't know. I'm holding off judgment on the, the fact that every single episode so far has been a cliffhanger until I see if they really are going to follow up. Because they, so far they say, 
two seasons, that's it. They're not going to do the typical American TV show thing of, let's just see how long we can go. So maybe they have a plan. Maybe they have part of a plan. So I'm holding off judgment on it. But I really do hope that we aren't going to be left with just a lot of, of cliffhangers. I have to admit, it's been a it's been a while since I last read an actual What If comic. I don't know. I I feel like the ones I read had conclusive endings. You know, that is part of the appeal is like, well, what what does it culminate in if this one thing was completely different? But, you know, it's the MCU. They, they're they gonna do continuity. They, they can't help it. Most of the voices in this episode are from the movies. The ones that aren't were Tony, you know, star power and all. It, yeah. Obadiah, Pepper, Ross, and Shuri. I can imagine the reason Shuri was played by someone else is that this is a version, what, eight years younger than, yeah, than the one we first met in, in 2016. So, so, yeah, there are a lot of very talented actors who cannot sound that much younger than, yeah, like, let's see, if she, in 2016, she was eight years younger. Now, we know for a fact that at least some of these voice performances were recorded, you know, I, I guess 2018 or so. So let's see, that would be, yeah, so so should I have to be able to sound 10 years younger than than the, yeah, that's, and and apparently the the actress who does play Shuri, I want I'm pretty sure that was the one is she's she's played other Marvel roles so that's cool. Nearly no broad performances in this. I I mean really. The the. At the very start of the episode. But I guess it's more of a it's it's more the animation than the voice performance. But the guy who wants Tony to take a picture, you know, the the smile he does is is a bit broad. But yeah, that's that's it. And we again, you know, we have a very dark episode. Like this is I mean, there's going to be a war between Wakanda and America. That's really, really dark. And uh, yeah the the um, i really appreciated you know tony really was as like utterly just completely like devoid of empathy as he was before the events of iron man one you know at, at the yeah before he was kidnapped and you know grew a heart in in iron man one you know the the part where he says you know the fact that he spilled some of his liquor was a war crime, you know. Oh, wow, that is just such an awful thing to say. And we, you know, we know that, like, some of the later, like, the, the, let's see, I'm trying to think, did Tony... do war crimes of his own that he later tried to atone for, maybe, um, yeah, may maybe not, but still, it's a, that is really not something you should, you should joke about, you know, I like the bit where he almost comes up with the, um, uh, arc reactor, you know, and and he even he almost taps his chest as as you know he's like, what if we made the arc reactor smaller? No, that's a dumb idea, because you know we've already seen that we've seen what it's like if you know an arc reactor is used to to power that kind. Of, so you know it, yeah, it's much more interesting to see you know anime drones made in part with, you know, vibranium that, that uh, you know, operate off like a hive mind AI. That's really cool. That is a very, very cool concept. And just, yeah, it, it was really, and 
you know, it, it is great. Like throughout the episode, the people who question what's going on the most are Pepper and Shuri. You know, they, they are, they, they really, they realize that there is something going on that, and yeah, the, the, um, uh, let's see, what was the other thing that I want to, so, you know, it makes sense that by the end of the episode, they are the two that have truly, you know, yeah, that, that fully realize, and, you know, I like the detail that Shuri could get into, like, it's one of Stark's buildings, and it's like, was it his office? I think in the movie it was Obadiah's, or wait, was the, was Obadiah just in Tony's office? I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, it's not gonna be super easy to get past the security, you know, in, in Iron Man 1, we see S.H.I.E.L.D. do it with some of their tech, but usually you have to, you know, but of course Shuri can. She, you know, she didn't even break a sweat. She's just sitting there really happy to be, you know, have, have found this, or have encountered this ally. She, I mean, she went in there knowing that Pepper would come in there and that they could work together again. Otherwise, she wouldn't be there when whoever did come in, you know. Now, I guess I'll just very briefly comment on, I saw on IMDb that this was actually a very low-rated episode, and I saw some people say that, I saw one person at least say that they thought the episode shouldn't glorify Killmonger. How is it glorified? He's clearly the villain. It's just saying that he's good at what he does. That's not the same thing as glorifying and the and I saw multiple people say that they didn't they they felt that characters were written as not as smart as they are depicted in the movies. I don't know. I feel like the the manipulation was so effective that uh, I didn't feel like they were let let's see okay, so like people like. Yeah, so the smart people who fall for stuff in this episode are Rhodey, Tony part of the way, General Ross, T'Chaka, Ramonda, and I just, if you look at who they're being, like, to, uh, let's see, yeah, no, no, Tony does see through, yeah, to, Tony at first you know, accepts the, the, you know, the, the stuff that Killmonger, I mean, isn't it just because we know that Killmonger's a bad guy? Like, the guy shows up, saves Tony's life, and then says, the reason that I knew that it was happening was because I've been undercover, and here's the proof that Obadiah's behind it. Like, I feel like if we didn't know that Killmonger was actually a villain, that would be very persuasive, you know, and honestly, I mean, are we 100% certain that he wasn't actually undercover? The, the, yeah, let's see, the, the, uh, so, the, yeah, Rhodey, General Ross, and some of the Wakandans, Ross, I don't think it would take very much for him to believe. I mean, I, f I feel like Rhodey already was, yeah, Rhodey was uncomfortable with it, but he does do what, you know, that like, basically they were pointing to the, the, except for when Tony is like way out of line, which I like the detail that he's, he's drinking a lot in this, so, you know, we're probably never completely going to get demon in a bottle, but this was a nice sort of, if we can't get the full thing, let's at least get a glimpse, you know, MCU in a nutshell. I, uh, what was the, except for when Tony's completely out of line, Rhodey does largely go along with what Tony says. 
you know, if you if you look at the movies, like if you think that that's frustrating character writing, I can understand that. But like if you if you really look at it, there really aren't that many times where Rhodey just says no to Tony. Like in Iron Man two, you know, he grabs the the Mark two armor attacks him and then flies off with it. Other than that, there really are not that many instances where Rhodey, like, outright says, Tony, this is wrong. What you are doing is wrong, and I'm not going to go along with it. And I'm not, like, I get, you know, that is a little uncomfortable for the rich white guy to be bossing around the black guy, but it's consistent writing, you know. And Ross is easy to, like, if you tell Ross that someone he already doesn't trust is doing something dangerous, yeah, he's gonna, like, immediately be, you know, I mean, just look at how, look, we gotta remember, it's especially this Ross, because this is the Ross that just, like, what is this? This is the same year. I was about to say this is the year after. No, this is the same year that he went after Bruce Banner, and he, he knows that Bruce Banner himself is not a threat, and yet he brings all these guns, and he's like, like, he, you know, point to me the instance in The Incredible Hulk, where he's like, I mean, okay, I want to capture the Hulk, but Bruce Banner himself, he hasn't knowingly hurt anyone. No, that's not who, you know, that's just not who Ross is. He, you know, if, if if there's a situation he doesn't, w w yeah, where someone he doesn't trust seems to have power, seems to be doing something wrong, he's gonna go guns blazing. You know, whole, I I mean that is that is his character flaw. That is part that that's a big part of why he keeps failing. Other than the fact that he's the antagonist of several of these movies, you know. So of course he's gonna fail, but because you know, not a lot of antagonist winning. In these movies, you know, I mean, there's there's Zemo, Thanos at first. Other than that, there's really not a lot. Killmonger through, you know, not not. You know, he didn't. Things didn't end up going the. Uh, his values were, you know, adopted, but not his methods. I think that was I'll I'll I'm not going to claim that I read every single review. I just I read a couple of IMDb reviews and it was immediately like what are these people talking about? So I didn't keep reading. I'm not saying it's entirely possible that there are excellent points made, but just yeah. I I can only If 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 I start reading IMDb reviews, top rated IMDb reviews, and I'm immediately like, this doesn't make any sense, then I'm not gonna keep reading because a bunch yeah. Let's see. That I think is everything I wanted to say. But but yeah, real quick, I thought this was a clever alternative to Black Panther, like Killmonger you know, in, in the movie Black Panther, like, well, yeah, let's see, what would the, I guess, in the movie, in Black Panther solo movie, you know, Killmonger and Claw are working together, and Killmonger is able to get into a situation where he kills Claw, and once he's killed Claw, he can just go to, you know, he just, yeah, walk walk through the, the, the border into Wakanda, and as soon as, you know, they're, they're going to confront him right away, obviously, he shows that he has Claw dead, and then he shows the, the lower lip, the, the, actually don't know what's I'm gonna go with tattoo to to be allowed in and then he makes his case you know in this he gets in touch with actually I guess we don't actually know I'm not sure it's said in the Black Panther solo movie how long 
he and Claw have been working together. But anyway, but, you know, I, I feel like it makes a lot of sense. This as an alternative way for, for Killmonger to min manipulate events so that he gets to be the Black Panther. I can't believe I... Yeah, I forgot until just now. The reason that Killmonger makes his move when he does is because he needed there to be a... Um, uh, what are they called again? When we, Yeah, when one leader of a country dies and they have to replace him with someone else, that's when he strikes. So he was waiting for the right moment and when T'Chaka was killed, you know, so that, yeah. And in this, he takes matters into his own hands and kills T'Challa. And I also really liked that, like, they could easily have had it be, like, this, you know, have, have had T'Challa just, like, make these, you know, uh, macho threats or something. Because he's, you know, he's, he's the, he was, he was the male lead of an action movie. You know, his, his name or title was even the, the title of the movie. So, you know, a lot of movies would go with that. The Snyderverse would very likely go with that. But no, he just, you know, they, they have a brief, like they, they, they express their values and... Yeah, I, I thought it was really, really well handled. But yeah, the, the you know, if Killmonger killed T'Challa, then he wouldn't have to wait for T'Chaka to be killed by Zemo. Makes a lot of sense. And, I mean, Tony Stark is not the most difficult man to manipulate, you know? I mean, Obadiah managed it. The, the, ah, Aldrich Killian managed it. I guess I'm not sure I would really claim that there's not really an antagonist or villain in the second Iron Man movie that managed to manipulate him, like, really effectively. I mean, I guess Ivan briefly, but not, but Natasha managed to manipulate him in that movie, you know. Thanos, an argument could be made, and let's see, the um, Wanda, you know, like, he gets, Tony gets manipulated almost every single movie that he has a major role in, you know, and yeah, Zemo, like, yeah. I'm not 100% certain that he ever appears in more than a cameo in an MCU movie and doesn't get manipulated by at least one character. And Killmonger is very, very smart. And, yeah, like, it wouldn't be that difficult for Killmonger to find out... You know, I... Okay, so basically he would have to find out what group to go undercover in. But... The... the Let's see, I guess, I figure he was probably looking at, is Obadiah Stain making any major moves? Because he, you know, he looks at, like, the, the you know, when he talks to Tony, he said, you know, at, at one point he says, you've never lifted a finger in your life. You know, he's, he, you know, he watches these people and tries to figure out who can I manipulate, who do I need to get out of the way. Obadiah would have been a problem if he didn't get him out of the way immediately, and Obadiah, you know, he couldn't really handle Tony having so much influence, so he, and, and yeah, Killmonger realized Obadiah's gonna try to get rid of Tony, he can't handle how much power this kid has. And... Yeah, I, I really thought 
the whole way through that it, it made a lot of sense. And yeah, the, the weapon that Killmonger uses against Rhodey as well as... Or wait, did Rhodey... No, I, yeah, I think both against Rhodey and against T'Challa is a, like, a, a gun version of the... Ah, what's it called? Yeah, the the little, you know, the the in 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 Iron Man one, Obadiah has it in the form of this little thing that he taps, you know, and it, yeah, it it gives off this sonic thing that incapacitates, and seemingly if you if you push it hard enough, and apply it for long enough, it can kill. And I mean, there are like I I remember reading. I don't think I, I read the... I, I saw a headline. I didn't read the article. I saw a headline saying that at a high enough volume, noise could actually kill you. And, yeah, it... And, and the, like, I figure the, the gun was probably also somewhat similar to the ones that General Ross was using in The Incredible Hulk, the ones that we're on like I want to say jeeps. It's been a while since I watched those that movie. I know, shame on me. No, seriously, I am one of the people who love that movie unreservedly. The the yeah, I you know I I felt like that it made sense that either there would be a gun version of the you know of the of the tiny little noise maker the the noise maker i felt like that made it made sense that there would be a gun and it is possible that like we didn't see every moment of interactions between killmonger and tony it's entirely possible that off screen killmonger told tony when I was going through Obadiah's files, I found this little, you know, sonic attack thing. I think it would make sense to make it bigger. And, I mean, who's to say that it doesn't exist in the MCU technically, but, like, Tony is like, get that gun out of my sight. Obadiah almost killed me with that thing. I don't want to, like... Again, Tony, he's not always the most rational. He's sometimes driven by his emotions. So, yeah. I think that is everything that I have to say about this. But, yeah, I, I hope we get to see more. I really like that we have these where, like, it seems like the bad guy might win. Some, you know, something horrible happens before the end of a what if episode. I, I quite appreciate that that again, you know, like let's see, we had the the very first one, there wasn't really a down much of a, a a little bit of a downer ending, but not that dark of an ending. You know, the downer ending that I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Captain Carter isn't going to be able to spend time with, with Steve. But, you know, second episode ends with it seeming like Ego is going to win this time. Let's see, third episode, Loki conquers Earth. Although it does end on the note that maybe they will be able to stop him. Let's see. The... That brings us to episode four. Strange Supreme literally destroys his entire universe because he couldn't let go of Christine. Episode 5 ends with zombie Thanos with, you know, five out of six Infinity Stones on the gauntlet. And then we have this, which, I mean, World War Three, I guess? Holy crap. Yeah. I do kind of like that this wasn't as bleak as Episodes 4 and 5. You know, 
the the I I think it would be excessive if every single episode was I there are two of my favorite episodes. Don't get me wrong, but I'm glad that it's that not, not everything is going to be that bleak. In yeah, and this show th this episode shows you can get dark without getting extremely bleak. You know this is still this is a bad beat. And yeah, that is everything that I had to say for this one. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording and I'll catch you next time.